Growing up, banana pudding was always a soul food Sunday favorite. Now my mom usually made hers with the jello pudding mix, but those old women at the church house had me hooked on that homemade pudding. Nothing like going to a church potluck and you got that homemade banana pudding from scratch. Well, baby, that's what I'm gonna teach you how to do today. Check out my ebook in the description box for all your soul food favorites. A lot of classic recipes that are great for holidays or just any family gathering. If you love my recipes and you want to see more, make sure you click the subscribe button and also turn on the bell so that you can get notified every time I post. I post new Soul Food Sunday meals every single week. The best pudding recipes always start out with egg yolks. I'm going to use four of them. If you see a recipe that wants you to use whole eggs, honey, just run from it because you do not want those egg whites. I save those just to put into a breakfast omelet. Now I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do the pudding. We ain't gonna temper eggs, none of that, okay? Now I have a pot on my stove and the eye is off, okay? It is completely cold. The first thing you want to do is mix your cornstarch, your sugar, and your salt very well. This is gonna make sure that there's not gonna be any lumps in from that cornstarch and everything's gonna to come together perfectly. Now while my eye is still off, I'm going to put in the eggs. I'm gonna use my whisk to start breaking up those egg yolks and then I am going to start putting in my dairy. For this recipe, I am using a combination of heavy cream and whole milk. However, you can use evaporated milk and whole milk to do this as well. I would not use low fat milk to make this because your pudding is just not going to be rich enough. I have cut my eye on a two on an electric stove and I am very gradually going to increase the heat up until about a four. The thing about making a pudding is that you want to slowly increase the heat. That way the eggs are gonna cook properly and you're not going to burn your milk. In total, it is going to take about 20 minutes for your pudding to cook. Do not walk away, do not take a potty break. The only thing you need to do is sit here and slowly stir and babysit this pudding. Okay, that's what you're gonna do for the next 20 minutes. How long you cook the pudding is going to determine the thickness. I like my pudding on the thick side, baby. You know, I want it to have a little meat on it, okay? So I cook mine until it gets to about this texture and then I am going to take it off of the heat. I'm gonna place this on my counter and throw in two tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Because the flavor of the vanilla is really going to come through, you cannot use imitation vanilla. I will use imitation vanilla when I bake, but in a pudding, you absolutely cannot. I'm gonna put my pudding in a Tupperware container and I'm gonna allow this to cool in the fridge overnight. However, you can just let this sit for about two hours or so in the fridge. You just want it to be fully set and nice and thick. Now it is the next day and my pudding looked a little bit, you know, it looked a little bit weird. It had cracks in it and stuff. Look, don't let that scare you. Just go in with your spatula and just mix it up and you're gonna see that it is going to start to become nice and smooth. So my pudding is delicious and really this is great on its own but I am going to whip up about a cup of heavy cream. Of course you can buy this from the store. I am going to mix this into the pudding I have left at the end just to give the pudding a nice loose texture. And to my heavy cream, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of powdered sugar and I'm gonna beat this until I get some nice stiff peaks. However, you don't wanna overbeat or this is gonna become butter, okay? I can eat all types of banana pudding. I can eat the one from the box as well as the homemade pudding, but the only one I cannot rock with is the hot banana pudding. I don't know, I don't like it. Let me know which one is your favorite. I put a thick layer of pudding at the bottom because I'm gonna be standing up some cookies in there. And did y'all know that the easiest way to open a banana is actually from the bottom? I learned this little trick years ago and I have been doing it ever since. Now, how many bananas you like to put in your banana pudding is up to you and your family. Now, if it was up to me, it'd only be about two bananas in this whole thing. But I am making this for someone, so I'm actually gonna put about five bananas into this. I love using shortbread cookies, especially the chessman cookies that have a little cute springtime shapes. At this point, you know, I was really getting into it and I was deciding I was gonna become a food stylist. So I just 
just took those cookies and I stood them up in the thick layer of pudding that I put at the rim. Those cookies that are broken, maybe we're going to use them too. We're going to crumble those up and we're going to put those over the bananas. I like putting crumbled cookies in the middle because when you go to scoop it, I feel like it's a little easier to get out everything. There was a 0% chance that I was going to put some heavy cream in a piping bag. So I got some ready whip and I made a beautiful layer around the edges. I really want through the glass for you to see that it looks like it's layered. Plus, I'm going to take some bananas and prop them up in that whipping cream. And that is just going to look so cute. Baby, you got to do this to impress your family, impress your guests. Plus, you're going to feel proud like, okay, baby, I got skills. And yes, you do. Now I'm going to add some more of that pudding to the middle. I really like that thick put to be in the middle of my banana pudding. And I saved about one third of the pudding at the side to add to my whipped cream. Now this is a little secret y'all. Don't tell nobody. Okay, don't tell nobody sister. We're going to crumble up some vanilla Oreos and we're going to stick those in there. When I tell you this is good. Baby, you're going to have everybody wondering what is that special something that you put in your banana pudding. This recipe is enough for seven regular people or five greedy people. If you want to fill up a nine by 13 dish, then you should double this whole recipe. With my remaining pudding, I am going to add it to my whipped cream. I really like that light pudding to be on top. I think it looks really pretty. However, if you wanted all of your pudding to be, have that whipped texture, you could mix the entire pudding with the whipped cream. Now I'm gonna add all of the pudding on top, making sure that I totally cover all of the bananas. Baby, you gonna have a brown banana fiasco if you do not cover up all of these bananas with this pudding. Let me know in the comments if you love homemade pudding or if you be making that jello instant pudding. Now I ain't gonna lie, that instant pudding is pretty nostalgic. However, the homemade pudding flavor cannot be beat. To the bananas that I am going to add to the top, I am going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on them. It will add a slight lemon flavor, but it ain't going to be a big deal, honey. Now I'm going to decorate however I want. I just want to stick some of those chessman cookies all over the place and then add some little bananas peeking through. And then I always love to have some crumbled cookie around. I just think that looks so cute. But of course, you can just decorate this any way that you want. Let this sit in the fridge at least two hours before serving just so all of the flavors can come together and the cookies will get a little bit soft. Let me know if you are going to make this homemade banana pudding. I promise you it will become a family favorite so quick. I love you and Jesus loves you. And I'll see you next time at Camira's Kitchen. Goodbye and God bless.